The previous video gave us a brief introduction into Poizone. This video will go on to explain how to set up Poizone, to work in standalone mode, as well as giving you a tour of the relatively simple interface. To initially set up Poizone to work in standalone mode, you are required to select Audio and MIDI Preferences. This is done from the Options menu at the top left hand corner of the interface. The first choice facing you is which type of driver you wish to use. Generally, if you have the option to select an ASIO driver, then that will usually be your best choice. Other driver types are more geared to running consumer level sound cards for games and multimedia. ASIO allows Poison to operate with a lower latency. To simplify what this means, latency is basically the delay between the time when someone hits a note on their keyboard to when you hear Poison out your speakers. It is a side effect of working with computer audio, and the key is getting the latency as low as possible without putting too much of a strain on your computer's processor, as well as with no audible glitching in your sound. If you find that this is happening, then you may need to increase your buffer size or lower your sample rate. The sample rate determines the quality of the audio that you will hear. 44.1 kHz is CD audio quality standard and will, in general, be fine for most people. Setting this higher will increase the audio quality, although above 96 kHz is the point of diminishing returns. This is if your audio interface can even go that high. Also, the higher you go, the higher the strain of your computer's CPU usage. The buffer size, in conjunction with the sample rate, determines how long the latency is. Ideally, you want this to be set to its lowest setting, as your computer and audio interface will allow. If you find that you are using too much processing power, or that the audio has artifacts during playing, then you'll normally find that changing this setting to a higher buffer setting or lowering the sample rate will fix the problem. This button here can call up your ASIO control panel for your interface if applicable. If it is, please see your audio interface's documentation for further details. Moving on to the actual interface itself, you can see that each section is clearly divided. At the top level, you have your master controls. This contains a section where you can scroll through your various presets, as well as having some of the more generic controls. The MIDI section is the part of the interface where you can change your mod wheel and your pitch wheel parameters. LFO is short for Low Frequency Oscillator, and allows you to have a certain parameter vary up or down over time. The envelope section allows you to adjust the attack, decay, sustain, and release envelopes, with the one on the right dedicated to amplification, and the other capable of multiple destinations. This central section houses the oscillator and filter controls. Moving right, you have the deceptively simple arpeggiator controls. These controls vary the parameter of the effects. And lastly, at the bottom, we have an on-screen emulation of a MIDI controller keyboard. That gives you a brief rundown of the user interface. And in the next section, I'll move on to look at the sound source itself, using the oscillators and how the filters will affect these sounds. 